Hello and welcome to my channel, where I do guides for photography. Today we are inside Darktable 4.0 and we are going to try and show the correct first steps workflow inside a scene referred workflow. So what is a scene referred workflow? Uh, the scene referred workflow is the new default inside Darktable. Actually, it's been the default for quite a while, but it's the default uh, workflow. And what I want to show is the initial steps for that workflow. So the necessary steps to make an image ready for anything after that point, after the initial develop. So we should just get started. Uh, the first thing you would start with is the exposure. You want to set the correct exposure before going in and setting the black point, white point, uh, uh, the color or white balance, stuff like that. So let's just open up this image just a bit, the exposure. And I'm going for something like that. I'm sure I'm clipping. No, I'm not clipping yet just a little bit, but that's fine. Okay, so we now have a proper exposure. The second step now would be go would be to go into Filmic and we are going to the scene. And this is where we can sort of set the white and the black point. So if I go this way, you can see that I'm introducing more whites and this leads to me clipping this image a lot. So of course I don't want to clip the highlights too much because clipped highlights on screen, it, it kind of, yeah, it can work, but clipped highlights in a print that will not uh, print any details for that white. So that's something you need to know. Also, we can adjust uh, or try and set the black point. So if I go all the way to the right side there, you can see that I'm crushing the blacks. And we don't want to do that. So I'm going to back off just to make sure that we have details in the black as well. Now I can go, for example, into look and introduce contrast. So that would be the natural point or place to set the contrast and I think that works for now so now we have done the crop the exposure and the filmic RGB the crop you can do whenever you want I like to do it right away because uh, then it's easier for me to see uh, the before and after in a more correct way all right so let's head over to the color calibration tool. Now, this is a really advanced module and I'm not sure I like it. I'm not sure that I like that they put everything inside this module because this is where you go to set the white balance, but you can also uh, use this module as a channel mixer. You can set a sort of uh, a, a saturation or colorfulness uh, where you boost the tones, uh, the brightness. Yeah, you can do a ton of stuff inside this module. And I, I, I just wish that white balance would be white balance and color calibration would be color calibration. But this is everything crammed into one place. And I don't think I like it, to be honest. Anyway, uh, we could try and set the white balance by using this droplet tool, but I think it's going to be totally crazy here because it doesn't really have a neutral point to try and pick the correct colors from. So yeah, I don't like that. So we are going to try and set it with the sliders instead. And I think maybe something like this and that introduced some clipping again but that's fine yeah somewhere around there 
All right, so that's the color calibration. And the next step uh, would be to use the color balance RGB. And the color balance RGB is where you can set the vibrance, the saturation, the chromos, chrom, chrominance, and even create uh, or tone the image, tone the shadows, the highlights, and stuff like that. So I'm going to try and boost the global vibrance. I'm just going to deactivate the clipping warning for now. And I'm going to see what happens if we play around with the hue shift. And I think I like it around there. And we can try the global chroma. No, the chroma is sort of like uh, saturation, except it's not supposed to change the luminance when you're using the linear chroma grading. But <laughs> yeah. And let's do some on the midtones and let's just play around with the highlights as well. Something like that. And the global saturation, we could try and play with that as well, maybe in the midtones again. And yeah, I kind of like that. Now, the perceptual brilliance grading, uh, if you think uh, develop module in most other <laughs> raw converters, so this is where you have shadows, midtones, highlights, which you can't tweak, but you need to be careful, especially after. 3.8.1 they changed something with this module so it's really powerful now uh, anyway let's open the shadows just a little bit to around there let's try and do something different with the midtones and let's just drop the highlights a bit so something like that all right so this is actually the initial steps that you would do inside Darktable and should do inside Darktable whenever you're using a scene referred workflow. Now we can take a look. So this is where we started. Uh, this is after a crop. And now we are at this point. So to me, this image doesn't look done. So this is when we will try and do the extra creative steps. So the first thing I'm going to do is to try and enable local contrast. And that makes it pop just a little bit more. So it's very flat now. But with the local contrast, it seems a bit better. And I'm actually going to do a new instance and I'm going to use the clarity preset. And I think this makes it pop just a little bit more. So if I remove this and this, you can see we are going from a real flat image. And let's enable these and it's popping just a little bit. Now, the next step I would do is to go into masking. I'm just going to try and find the correct mask. And I don't like it. It's a bit too dark here. So I'm just going to go out with my mouse cursor. And I'm just scrolling upwards with my mouse uh, wheel. And that lifts the shadows here. And I just want to try and darken the area around the moose. But yeah. So you can see here, it's 0, uh, 0.8, the exposure value, and it's the same around here. So if I scroll down here, I'm also darkening the moose, but that's fine. But there are cases where you, of course, don't want to do that. I'm just going to go up a bit there. Yeah, I think that sort of works. Uh, just going to go down a bit again. All right. So that's so far. The next steps I would do is to go into the correct tab. And I just would go for denoise, lens correction, chromatic aberration. 
And I also like to try the haze removal just to make the image pop a bit more. So of course there's no really haze in this image, but whenever you activate the haze removal, it will also boost the contrast. So you can clearly see that it made the image pop even more, just a little bit. And I think it's fine around there. And maybe we should actually go up just a bit on the shadows. Not much, but just a little bit. To somewhere around there. I think that's fine. Now, let's go into Filmic and look again and play around with the contrast. And I think that's fine. And I'm going down to Exposure and I'm just going to bring that up just a little bit more. Yeah, somewhere around there. And of course, there's uh, other things that you could try. You can try the contrast equalizer, for example, the clarity preset. It's too much, but we can go in and we can, for example, go down on this mask tool and go down on the opacity, play around with the opacity until we are happy. And I think that's fine. And finally, I would uh, probably finish off with a vignette. I really do like vignettes in my images, or at least in images like these. Yeah, I think that brings out the moves well. So I sort of like it. Yes, gonna bring it down even more around the edges there. So, of course, uh, with the wingnet, with this wingnet, you will clearly see that I've darkened around the moose. And of course, you should sort of try to avoid uh, making things you're doing really visible, <laughs> really. Oh, so you fix the corners, uh, but yeah, it's sort of like a artistic uh, move that you can make. To me, it's fine. I don't care if I see images with a really hard vignette or whatever. It's just an artistic expression, but there's also the point is that, yeah, should you show too much of your editing? Uh, should it be visible that, yeah, this image is clearly edited like crazy? So you need to weigh those two points up against each other. In my case, sometimes I feel like going for subtle edits Sometimes I feel like going for strong edits and to me, it's entirely up to you. It's your art. If you want to go for a strong edit, just do it. Don't care about what other people think. Yeah, I think that's fine. Let's have a look at where we started. So this is at the crop and very flat, very boring, and this is after the crop, and I think it works. All right, so let's see here the necessary steps here. So this is after doing the initial steps that you should do whenever you're doing work inside Darktable with a scene referred workflow. And yeah, it's not looking great at that point, at least not this image. So there are more steps to do after that point, but that's when your creativity comes into it. And this is where we are after doing a lot of steps to this image. 
but I do think that this image now works pretty well and it's uh, sort of interesting. I would maybe blur the grass a bit, the vegetation a bit, because it's sort of stealing the attention from the moose. And maybe I would actually do some dodge and burn in the f fur of the moose. But yeah. Alright, so I think that's it for this video. It's been a long while since I did a video last. So I'm sorry about that. But it's uh, summer and my girlfriend has her vacation. And we've been traveling and shooting a lot of images. But... I wanted to make this video. So remember, there are necessary steps that you need to do inside Darktable when developing images in a scene referred workflow. And I do understand that uh, some of the modules might seem overwhelming, <laughs> especially in the beginning, and especially if you come from some sort of software like. Lightroom or any other software actually because Darktable is quite different than other raw converters but it's really not that complicated you have a ton of options that's true but in the beginning you can just ignore the other options and do the initial workflow and just play around and get to know the software better. So the first steps was the exposure. You change the exposure and that's simply this slider. The next step is to set a white and black point. You can do that under the filmic RGB and move these two sliders. And you can also try the auto tune levels and no problem. So maybe you want to add some contrast. You can do that under look so two mod modules and three or four steps that's it finally or the next step would be to go into color calibration and set the white balance you can try the droplet tool sometimes it doesn't work and if it changes the image too much simply hit this button it will reset the parameters then try the sliders here so the white balance or the kelvin is that number so it says hue and chroma under here so it's sort of difficult to understand what those two does but this is where you set the tint and the white balance simply ignore these modules for now and finally the last steps for a scene referred workflow would be go to go into color balance rgb and just play around with the sliders there so yeah it's not too complicated it's just you need to know the order of things you need to know what steps you should follow and it's basically four steps just for the initial edit and everything after that is your creativity that's it so i hope this is clear i hope that you don't get spooked by dark table and think it's far too complicated for me i need to back off this stuff it's really not that complicated all right so i think that's it for this video if you like the video, hit that like button. If you want to watch more from me, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if there's anything you want to discuss about this video or anything else, hit that comments. And thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you again. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.